Let's roll the cameras. Close. <laughs> Two, one. This net perfect. I finished working on The Last Gorillas campaign at the end of 2010, beginning of 2011, and found that I had time to, uh, to consider doing something like this. I mean, I've been offered things like this in the past, and I never took the commission because I was too, either too busy or I wasn't necessarily interested in working for the particular product. And I had a long look at the... Uh, the absolute Bible of all of the limited edition collaborations they had done over the years. And um, I really liked a lot of the stuff I saw. I was interested in this one because I felt I could, you know, be creative with it, have some fun. I like London because it's dirty, <laughs> it's crowded. I like Londoners. And I've always found that quite exciting, and the smells and the noises. And I find it an inspiring place. I was always drawn to West London when I was younger because I was, I was a big fan of The Clash and then a big fan of Big Audio Dynamite. There was a wonderful poster of, for Big Audio Dynamite's first album and they were stood on Goldbourne Road, Mick Jones and Leo Ezekiel Williams, and then Twilight Tower behind them. I love that uh, architecture and... and the Westway and stuff. I even worked in a studio under the Westway and the roof of the studio was a section of the Westway motorway. And uh, not a particularly healthy place to work. <laughs> After racking my brains for some time to think what to do on the bottle, I came up with the idea I wanted to do a sort of Dickensian character with a sort of decaying Dickensian London backdrop. And then obviously you have to collaborate and talk and discuss and they wanted a little bit more than just an artful Dodger-esque character with his tooth missing on the front of the bottle. So in order to be able to draw the Dickensian character, I expanded it to the idea of different fashions throughout the ages. I think I thought of like four to start with and it extended to seven characters. Those styles that I've based the characters on are so iconic and so clear that it's not, it wasn't difficult to draw a Scar character, a punk rocker, a, a pinstripe gentleman, a, a dandy, a Dickensian. I mean, it's all very recognisable, iconic style for each character. So all of those characters, when I figured out what they were going to be, I just drew them all. I like to do it in one go. I don't like to redraw anything. I think the first time is the best time. I think that's when you get it. If you start to redraw it, then you start to lose the, the, the focus on what you're doing. Designing for a bottle makes no difference to me. I spent 10 years drawing comic books and, you know, it's amazing what you can say in a, in a panel that's three inches square. I'm used to working in, in unusual spaces, small spaces, circular spaces. It wasn't a problem at all, no. What's on the bottle is a little bit different to what I drew to start with because I had to go through a process. It's all dip pen and Indian ink and watercolour. But in the technique that they use for these bottles, watercolour doesn't work. So then it had to be um, computerised. It had to be altered after I'd finished it a little bit to get it to look as close to the original drawings. But then what they use in the, in, 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 uh, on paper in the campaign and stuff is, is what I originally drew. But then I should have thought about that when I was drawing it. But uh, I, just, I just did it in the style I wanted to. They're based on people I'm used to know. The Scar character, that's probably the one I like the most because that's kind of my, that's when I was, you know, coming of age and wanting to find style and wanting to be, have an identity. I remember sort of being in the schoolyard looking at the, uh, you know, the kids who were into Scar and the skinheads and really being very impressed at their style and how they looked. And you'll notice that the most up-to-date fashion statement would be the football casual. It's probably based on someone I used to know many years ago who was into his sort of Pringle and was very stylish but was always out on a Saturday causing trouble. <laughs> I was always kind of interested in, in their look and their culture and a little bit afraid of it as well probably. 
And then beyond that, I thought I should do someone who's more, more current. And I suddenly thought, since then, fashion has just repeated. You know, the 80s is, big, is back again. And so my oldest son, the way he dresses now is the way I used to dress when I was 17, you know. So it stops with this guy. <laughs>